I don't care. He needs one nil. If we keep down, 13th in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be. Oh, when, when have we got leads? Now then, people, now then, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It's time, finally time, because we've just watched, we've just watched Luke Ayling get an assist and mean that Ipswich have only picked up a point, which is absolutely massive. Still doesn't, you know, come over the fact that Leeds United again failed to win a game of football, but what it does do is rolls it on for another week. Another week. And by that Southampton game, I still think we've got the most favourable of the fixtures. But we've been saying this for weeks now. Um, yeah, the Eds, I don't know, listen, you've heard me speaking to a deaf and let's, let's, let's see what others have got to say. Paul, man, um, again, another failure against Blackburn, man, we, sh yeah, they were, sh the shite, man, what, what happened, <laughs> man? Um, people got the changes that they wanted to a certain yes. degree. Yes. Um, and the changes, whilst they sped things up a little bit, I don't think they implemented as much as what people were expecting them to. Um, I thought the first half was, we, we did all right. We looked quicker. We looked a little bit more on the ball. Cree was doing okay, if a little bit greedy. Um, second half, I don't know what happened. I don't, I, I don't know what team came out, but it wasn't the leads that were playing in the first half. It took um, that absolutely ridiculous challenge that um, Connor Roberts did practically on the line for us was, to even wake yeah. up in the second half. Yeah, it was we, we were nuts. But then just the substitutions didn't make any sense to me. If I was being brutally honest, I would have bought Somerville off instead of Nonto. I would have kept Nonto on. I know he might have been knackered, but Somerville was uh, just disappeared in the second half. And I don't... I would have bought Joseph on for Piru as well. Dan James looked good when he came on. I thought he looked absolutely... I, th I thought he posed quite a bit of a threat. I just... We just seem to have this issue with the final third where we can't seem to get anything going at all. I don't know why we can get... It's clearly when you look at the way that Blackburn set up at the start of the game, they, they had five, five at the back straight away and then four sitting very, very close. So it was almost a back nine. And we were always going to struggle with that. And we weren't going to, we don't have anybody that can unlock it. Like, let's say, like Pablo Prague and sense. Yeah. And, and whilst Rutter has been phenomenal this season, and he has, you can't get away from that fact. He's been poor for me yeah. since the international break and since he's come back from his injury. But the thing with Rutter is, is that he could have that one moment in the game where he goes past seven players and puts it on a plate for somebody. But Rutter should have been. I, I, I Rutter, the, I've got an issue with Rutter at the moment. Not to scapegoat anybody because it takes the whole team. And just you see the stuff on Twitter. Oh, fark cool. out this. Fark out that. Da, 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 da. They're all and name calling. I ain't got a problem with criticizing the team. I ain't got a problem with criticizing the manager. He got the subs wrong today for me, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Um, but let's not revert to the name calling and the nastiness because that's not needed. And that's not what the boys need at this moment in time. Exactly. I didn't think the atmosphere was good at Ellen Road either. I thought the, I thought the atmosphere was a little off because everybody's nervous. So I can understand it to a certain degree, but yeah, I just, we just, it's a final third for me again. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you've, you said a lot there, Paul. Great. As always, thanks for coming on. Make sure you check oh, out Leeds you. therapy folks as well. Let's get into 1k ASAP. Um, so much to get into really, but before we pick the bones out of it all, let's, let's hear, Max's initial thoughts should be able to check his post match up, which will be up as well, I assume, already on Leeds lately. But Max, I'm hearing you for the first time. What are your thoughts, pal? Yeah, I mean, like Paul says, as soon as you go out there, you're like, okay, we've got a new starting lineup. Um, there's been some changes. I think that actually helped. And having Connor Roberts out on the right hand side, I'm not sure whether it was Jer or you or somebody mentioned the other day that. Rodon seems to be a bit more willing to pass the ball to Connor Roberts than what he does to Archie Gray. And so I think he had that option and and, and because of that and then putting Archie Gray in the midfield and because of Kamara's been off it a little bit recently because he's been ill, I thought that made us play a little bit quicker. I thought it made us create chances. And I honestly think that that's one of those games where if we'd scored one of the chances that we had in the first half, we would have gone on to score two or three yeah. because 
they would have had to come out a little bit and they wouldn't have been able to sit in. The way it panned out obviously allowed them to sit in for the whole game, score, and then sit in again. Um, so it's very disappointing. But what I want to say is that people going, oh, Farker should be sacked. Farker's not good enough. Two things. Number one, any other season on this points tally after this amount of games, you're in the top two and you're pretty much automatically promoted already. Um, the second thing is Farker's done what people wanted and he's made changes and he set them up in a way that they would have won the game if they'd have finished the chances. Yeah, yeah. We created enough today to win the game, which is what we've been saying over the last couple of weeks. Last couple of games we go, okay, well, we've not been creating enough. But now there's not that excuse. It's that we just can't finish our dinner. Yeah. You get people flying at the back post and it's like inches away from making yeah. it nil and and balls across the box and headers going over the bar and it's just like how many chances do you actually need to put the ball in the back of the net and that's been our issue the one criticism of Farka, again i agree with what you said that um the substitutions for me when joseph came on joseph replaced nonto but joseph should have replaced piru and yeah, yeah. got up gone up front with bamford um I don't know why he decided to take Nonto off because Nonto was probably my man of the match in that game. And when he came off, I was like, well, he was the one that was creating things and, and sparking things off. So, uh, And as well, listen, the goal we conceded, that is awful because we can defend however well we want for an entire season. But you can't, it's criminal to let goals like that go in. Like it's a, it was literally a goal kick. As soon as Rodon doesn't win the first header, everybody else is in disarray. And it's like, hold on, Schmodix is just through on goal yeah. from a goal kick. That is like Sunday league defending that yeah. allows you to go through. Having said all that, Ipswich have drawn, Leicester lost. It's not as bad as it could have been. It seems like all of these, I would imagine if you took uh, the yellow and blue and the colors off this and put, the, Ip, the Ipswich colours or the Leicester colours on the Leicester badge on this as well, they'll all be saying the same thing because none of us, <laughs> honestly, I don't, it's that, it's I, said, it. I said on my stream, you know, the the, the uh, gif of Sideshow Bob walking uh -huh. over, standing on a rake and he goes, and he goes, <laughs> then he goes and stands on another one and another one and another one. We're all doing it. Yeah, it's mad. It is, mate, it's mad. Do you know, just on the changes as well, I, look, for me, I, I I got Piro starting. I got it, right? But then as the game developed, I realised why he hasn't been playing there because the, the majority of his touches were in and or the best He's touches got that he had. Feet. 100 percent mate, like Lukaku, Timberland Boots. But he also the the majority of his best touches were around the circle in the centre of the pitch, not not round the D at the you know, in the in the box. And even then it was it was a bit lackluster and I know people don't want to hear it, but I would argue, had we have made the same changes but started with Bamford, we'd have looked better in that first half, and that might be crazy, and everyone says I'm a Bamford lover and all that sort of stuff, but I just think we may have. And it may just be as simple as, why didn't you start Joseph? Because he's more similar to, to, to Bamford. I just think as well now, with three games left to go, if he felt the pressure was too high for Joseph three games ago, he's not putting him in for the last three, especially two of them being away and one against Southampton. So we need to realise that that's not going to 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 happen. Um, uh, as well, the changes, I think, Nonto I sort of get, because he's. I didn't want him to come off, and I didn't understand it at the time. But he wants to keep him fresh, as fresh as he can. He probably starts against Borough and, you know, him and Roberts get 90 minutes. I think I think for me as well, the Gruev change also is a reason why we concede the goal. Because yeah. I don't I, I think if that ball goes up, Gruev's there. Gruev I just marshaled it. Go on, Max. What confused me about that was if you're gonna Take if you're going to make attacking changes right and put extra players up front, and you're going to sacrifice one of your midfielders. Yeah, surely you sacrifice the one that's not Great. an out and out holding midfielder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah surely yeah, yeah. you sacrifice the one that isn't the best defensive. I know Archie Gray's had a really good season, but compared yeah, to yeah. Gruev, some of the tackles you see Gruev make. Gruev's yeah. a proper defensive midfielder who flies back, makes sliding tackles, everything. Uh -huh. So the only thing I can think is that Gruev isn't fully fit and he wants him for the next game. But at this point in the season, how how are you going to 
think about the next game when it's like you have to win this one. Mm -hmm. This isn't the time to be thinking about the next game. This is the time to be going, we need to win this game. Ipswich, yeah. uh, sorry, Leicester lost last night. We need to win this game and it'll allow us to, it doesn't matter. Then we think about next game, next game, like there's only a few left. So that baffled me. Gruev is an out and out holding midfielder who will stay back and will defend and will make tackles. Yeah, Gray's a very good player. I'm not criticizing Gray, mm -hmm. but from Farker's point of view, he should have took Gray off and left Gruev there because he's happy to drop into centre back. He's happy yeah. to help out defensively. I don't get why he did what yeah, he did he was, there. He was, he was doing it in the first half. I mean, looking at the actual goal itself, if you look at Byram's positioning for that goal as well, he was it just the cover on it. For me, if Roberts is on and Roberts is and Roberts is is playing at that point, Roberts is the cover there that's needed. Yeah. Byron was too central on that in terms of where for for where I forget how you pronounce his name Skimidis or Skidmark as I'm going to call him from now on. <laughs> where, yeah, where where his positioning was, he 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 left him with too much space, far too much space. And is it there was a yeah, perfect yeah. example of that. Sorry, yeah. go on. No, no, I was just, just going to say. <laughs> You go. <laughs> I was just going to say there was a perfect example of Gruev tracking his runner in the first half. You know when Smodix had that shot that he curled it and Melier saved it away to his um, far Left. post, like he yeah, dived. Yeah. yeah. So there was a, that. That was um, Dolan was running on the other side, and if Smodix was if Smodix was sorry, Dolan was running on the other side. Smodix had the ball, and if Gruev hadn't have absolutely busted a gut to follow Dolan back to the back post and be in front of him, block off his run, be there the whole time. He would have just squared it to him for a tap in. So Gruev has that ability to go, okay, I need to go with this runner now and just go for it. And I think that's the sort of thing that stops goals like that. Someone anticipating and going with the runner. And he, if he'd have been on as well as like you say, Roberts, those type of those two probably would have stopped that goal. I think so. And it, do, they're, they're, do, go on. Go sorry. On. No, well, do you have any Guampo? <laughs> sorry, their their manager made quite a, quite a clever substitution at half time, and that was he put on another central defender in the big lump that he <laughs> that he was Mc, McFadden or whatever. McFadden, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought it was I thought it was McFadden, but it's not it's McFadden, isn't it? And yeah. that seemed to just sort of quieten it off a little bit as well, and that yeah. seemed to be quite an astute little substitution that he made. Yeah. Yeah, because Wharton, if I remember rightly, kept coming out of position, whereas, like you say, when that Matt Vaden came on, he was everywhere. In yeah. the attacking box, in the defensive box, he was a bit of a shit house. He had experience, he had a go grey, you know what I mean? So, mm. and there was a lot of right, so you you are right. Did any of you have a, any question marks over the lineup, or were you both happy? Was it like, yeah, no, I get it, let's go? I, I, when I saw it, I was, I was like, okay, I get it. But then I think as soon as I saw the first sort of 10 minutes, I was like, everything's working except Joel Perrault or Joel Peru. I don't, I kind of don't really see what he's for anymore. And I, I think Bamford's better than him. And we signed him to be better than Bamford. And now, do you get what I mean? Like, yeah, I he does, he does the Harry Kane job of running back into the center circle to pick up the ball, spraying it out to the wing and then trying to get back in the box again. And he did that well a couple of times, but that's not his job. He's a go he's a striker. And mm. whilst that doesn't necessarily in the modern game mean that he just has to score goals, he doesn't really do any of the other stuff like his hold up play and making runs to open space for other people. I, I just don't see that kind of willingness to run that you get through Bamford and and Joseph and and any other striker that we could possibly put up there. I mean, at this point, I think I would rather put Joffy on than Piru because Joffy, when he has come on and he played on the right hand side a couple of times, didn't he in the cup or in the league once or twice? I think he's done well, and I think he's, he's low center of gravity. He's strong shoulders. He's able to like be an extra sort of hold up man, but on the wing, and he's pretty nifty with his passing and. I, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more of Joffe if that's a substitution to make. 100%. When you th you know when you're throwing all your strikers on, I do, I to do, maybe I, put him on. Yeah, hundred percent. And I do just Trevi, Trevor, right? You do realize Piro was on the pitch, so why wasn't he in that position? This is he the never point. is. No, he never is. This is the point. If you think about right prior prior to Bamford coming on. We were not complaining of him missing a single chance. Bamford came on. 
He nearly got on the end of one, talking inches, that Nonto nearly missed, and, and they punched the post. There was the cross that came in for a header that he misses, because he gets underneath it. Piro didn't get in any of them positions once. You don't so, see him miss those chances because he's not there to, exactly. for them to even happen. Bamford is in all, the right place at the right it. time. Exactly. It's all good saying, but Piro, we'll get in the fucking positions, Joel, and then and then we'll have that conversation. This is the point, man. This is I, I had people saying. in my chat blaming Bamford for the loss when he came on in the 70th minute or whatever it was. So I was like, yeah. you're taking the mick. Yeah. <laughs> This is the thing. It's 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 let's play the blame game, and it just it winds yeah, me up. Exactly, when bro, it, every, every it's right. Well, it's, it's somebody. I've seen somebody in the comments going it, jokingly, but going it's all Cooper's fault. But you know, it's a joke. But it's just that's why do we end yeah, up yeah. doing that all the time? Yeah, yeah. Look, with I, I thought Nonto like being the bright spot. He was taking shots from outside of the box, and it's yeah, one of the things we don't do. Yeah. And Dan James, when he came on, did exactly the same thing as well, taking shots from outside. Connor Roberts as well. Connor Roberts yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice shot from Connor Roberts as well. It's just. It's not even just the, the main chance of them actually going in. It's anything that gets spilled, yeah. anything that gets patted back into the box, anything that causes chaos in the defense. You've always got a chance of putting one of those in the back of the net, especially if you've got somebody like, I don't know, a Bamford. He's always going at the toes of the keeper and trying to just be annoying and just be there to to tap something in and we just try and walk it in too much but having said that th today creating chances uh, yeah it, it wasn't the problem it was just putting the one in the back of the net and we've it got been a very start, different game if we scored uh trying a way to break down this low mid block it's been the same all season everybody knows now just sit deep with us and you'll 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 get somewhere with it. There was one moment in the in the first half. I can't remember who played the long ball through. I think it was Connor Roberts where it came through to Peru. He was just offside, but it completely threw Blackburn. And had he held his run and he didn't have trampoline feet, as you say, Max, <laughs> and controlled it, we could have been in on goal. Then it's we we don't switch it up enough. And that's that's something I don't understand. I, I want to see us. I mean, it's a bit late now. We've got three games we left. We did use the right a lot more though today, yeah. Paul. I felt, and yeah, I don't. Yeah. Know, I was thinking he's because Gray's on. That Gray's aware that there is someone out on the right because he's normally the one stood out there going, "Give me the ball." You know what I mean? Like mm. we did use that. I did like that about us. I did like the fact that we had a little bit of variation with the free behind Piro because they sometimes Rutter was out on the right, sometimes Nonto was central and that that looked good. A lot of people were telling me prior to you lads coming on that that we didn't create, we never looked like scoring. That's not true. We created enough to score to score today, yeah, I felt. We created enough to win the game. This is what I mean yeah. though. Like I get what you're saying about not creating enough against uh, not doing well against low blocks. But that's just because we're not clinical enough, I think. I, I genuinely think that's just because we're not clinical enough. In previous games, it's because we haven't created enough chances. But when we do get it right, and when we do get everything set up correctly, and we play well, we create chances. That first half, I thought we, it's the best we've played in the last... So, it's since the international break. That's the best half of football we've played since the international break. And other teams like Ipswich or like Leicester, who obviously they're all falling over themselves at the moment as well. But against low blocks this season, that's when they've had somebody clinical who can put the ball in the back of the net. The The only problem for us is that we can't score. We, we've created the chances, just nobody can finish. But I think Matteo Joseph can finish, and he's not given the time to to try and do so. I, I, what is the harm in giving him more time? I, I I still find it weird bringing on somebody like Joseph with like ten minutes to go. It just doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't make any sense. If you need if you need the goal and you're desperate for the goal to come, give him twenty minutes plus extra time rather than just that ten minutes. It seems to be bring Joseph on at eighty. It's like it's not time for the experiment. Just bring him on and let him try and do what he needs to do. Just what maybe. do we do about set pieces, lads? Because I swear to God, every time we get one. <laughs> I mean, you might as well give it back to the keeper, genuinely. I actually like, genuinely, pointless. when we get a set piece, I nope. worry more about us being counter-attacked <laughs> than, I, than I like get excited about us it's scoring true. a goal. Like it's just not it's a possibility true. that we'll score from a set piece. You they know, are... we got one in the last we got one in the last 30 seconds, you know, and I went, No, I should be going, yeah. come on, but I just yeah. knew. Do you know what I mean? They are one of the worst 
teams that defend in set pieces throughout the entirety of the season. I think they've conceded they? the second the second yeah. most goals from set pieces throughout the entire season, and we just we just, just not can't one. do we anything don't. against them. The last time we were decent is when when Strout was in the box. He's actually he he seems to get yeah, he got on the end of stuff, but he stuff. just got he had yeah, a fifty p as well, and yeah, exactly. Just, <laughs> Just went but off in all directions. My, my big thing is it's it's missing it's missing the first man, and that is yeah. hugely frustrating. Um, I think Gruev puts in quite a good corner actually, yeah, does. Yeah. and I find it frustrating that it seems to be Somerville. I mean, Connor Roberts isn't too bad either, but Somerville or Dan James, when just for me, Gruev is better. But then you then lose that defensive aspect of what he brings to it as well. But it's. Do you know what's weird, though? There was a couple of games, probably about 10 or 15 games ago, right? And there was a, there was a, a couple of games where there was a spell of Junior Firpo taking free kicks and corners. And his delivery was, like, really, really good and on point. He would, you know, when you get one from just outside the box, maybe on the left-hand side, and a little outswinger that goes across and in front of the defenders. Firpo was putting those into the box with decent delivery, and he put a few good corners into the box. We just... Have never tried him since, and everybody else seems to hit the first man. I just don't. It's so true. Get it. Um, yeah, I agree. Leeds... I'd put fur pole on every set piece. But... <laughs> One sec, bro, and I'll bring you in, my man. Uh, Radaby leads to get the best out of Peru. We should. Get... We're not going to do that now, but it's okay. We should go four four two with him and Joseph up top. This would give Rutter a much needed rest. Four two three one doesn't suit Piro. And a lot of people said this. Shout out Loki. Shout out. I think Max would have said it as well. I think um, Andrea said it. They all said he's. Just... Striker that don't fit our system. I uh, was wrong about Peru. I thought he would work. Oh, did you? Right. Okay. Just, yeah. I'll just say well, that so I don't accidentally take credit. Should have no, listened no. to the Oracle from day one. That's all I'm saying. Should have oh. listened to the Oracle from match week two, match week three. That's all I'm saying, man. Never never made any sense to me, the, the signing. But, you know, what can you do? What we should have done is... It takes signed. a year. It takes a year, but eventually JT's right in the end. This is what we've learned. <laughs> yeah. But this is the thing. It happens with, with all of them. About three it years. happens with everybody. Yeah, third ball about three years. Uh, what we should have done... Oh, is... three years. Not three years, huh? We should have tried to sign... I mean, I know what Ipswich have done is so clever. In January, going, okay, we need somebody to try and help get us across the line. Let's buy Kiefer Moore. Mm. And yeah. yes, he's not the best striker in the world. And at the time... Bro, we I got battered like... for that on social media. I got battered for it. But he was the right... You're right, man. You're right. But at the time, we were like, well, he's he's crap. He's not good. But a bit. sometimes you need a big lump up front to put the ball on his head. And especially yeah. in games like that, we don't have any aerial threat. So Farker's only sort of solution to these games is throw all our attackers on but sometimes it might be like okay well let's try something different let's mm. try putting crosses into the box for a big lad but you can't well, do we, that we if do. you don't well, have do one have, in the squad we do we do have aerial threat it's just that aerial threat is about as threatening as a butter knife to the wrist so <laughs> it's not exactly going to cause much harm because that is patrick bamford he is actually very good in the air it's just he pisses everything up a toilet wall every chance yeah, he's, we good, get. he's good at Getting it on his head, he just yeah. <laughs> just not the rest of it. Not the yeah, just direct direction <laughs> is uh, something he hasn't thought about until it's already gone out for a throw in. No, yeah. JT, give me your overriding thoughts on the ninety minutes, then, buddy, or ninety five, whatever it was. <sighs> Listen, I mean, as I said, it's going to be very refreshing to a lot of people. That you know, usually I'm a blind optimist or whatever people say. You know, crazy. I think we've bottled it, man. I think that's it. Automatic is. How? How? Well, Tell me what. Embarrassing. Absolutely pathetic. Embarrassing. Uh, we, listen, I'll, t I'll explain finish, to you how. Finish first. I'll explain one. to you how. Listen, you want to go on this crazy run yet? First of all, I, I don't hear why people are saying, oh, look at where we are. If you said this at the beginning of the season, you would have taken it. No, I wouldn't. Okay, I said from day one, we should be getting promoted. The squad we have, the manager we have. Listen, the fact we were 17 points behind Leicester in the first place is embarrassing. But listen, you make up that ground. You do all that great work to get yourself up to that level, to the point where you have it in the palm of your hands. Shout out Bray Wyatt. May he rest in peace. And what do you do? You blow it away. You throw it away. Since the international break, I know we've had injuries. I know we've had referees screwing us left, right, and center. But come on. Five games, two draws, two losses. Is it? And one win? 
Yeah, we're not the only ones, though. Bro. I didn't know. Exactly. Really but that makes it worse. That makes yeah, it, it worse. Does. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. We've been gifted lifeline after lifeline after lifeline. And if you don't take the chances you're given, listen, as they said, it's the old tale of, of God giving you lifeline after lifeline, you know, and, and people not wanting to take it. And, and it's like a guy is stranded on a ship and he's praying to God, please, please save me, please Sim save me. And a, rife, and, and a raft comes past and he doesn't do anything and he's just praying to the Lord, please save me. And another one comes and another one comes and eventually the Lord is like, well, listen, I gave you three or four opportunities to save yourself and you didn't do it. I can't, you know, I could take you to water. I can't make you yeah. drink. We've been taken to the water three, four times and we've squandered it. Like today was embarrassing, really. Yeah, we had a lot of chances and we didn't take them, but... The lineup, I thought, was absolutely woeful. I mean, what does Joseph actually have to do to get a start? Let's be real here. What does he have to do? He takes Bamford out the side for the first time and he puts Piro in. Where's the logic in that? He then keeps him on for the full 90th minute, takes Rutter off for some inexplicable reason. Yeah, no, he Rutter wasn't was having shy, his best man. game. Rutter yeah, was he shy. was. He was. But even when he's shite, he still has the ability to do something magical. And if you look at the way Rutter plays, usually his best football comes in the last 15 to 10 minutes of the game. And if you actually look at that game, he was actually starting to grow into it before he got taken off. He was starting to, the cogs were starting to turn a little bit. Why would you put three strikers on the pitch and no one that can create for them? Where is the actual logic in that? Bamford, Joseph, Perot, and no creator. It, 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 and then you take Nonto off who I thought was looking like our most dangerous attacker, even I thought looked more dangerous than Somerville in that game. Uh, I I don't know why he took Grev off as well, because I thought Grev was just starting to get into the game when he took him off. I don't understand any of the, the decisions that were made. I thought it looked very panicked to me and very rushed, which is actually weird, because if you look at all of his press conferences, Fark is... So cool, calm, and collected, almost to the point where I'm like, flip in it, mate. You might, you know, I hope you're not this calm and collected in a dressing room. I hope you're throwing some, throwing some hair dryers around in there. But I, I don't know. As I said, my my overriding what? thoughts are: I think we've completely blown it. And I will come back to. I do. I do want to say, like for me, and I said this on the watch long. It was the first time I've actually looked on the sideline and Farker looked fuming. Like he looked like he he, he was for me anyway. He looked like annoyed and a little bit devoid um, because, like you say, probably thinking, oh, no, this was it. This was a moment for us kind of vibe. But um, I, I I get I get the, the rutter change. When you say what I do want to pick you up on, though, like there's still three games left to go, JT. It's not done yet, you know? And, and the reason I'll say this is, admittedly, we've got to go away to Borough. We've got to go away to QPR and we've got to play Southampton, right? I hear it. But... Ipswich have got to play Hull and Coventry. Leicester have got to play Southampton, West Brom, and Preston. There's still opportunities for Legion. Yeah, United but to let's let's this. be real here. Let's be real here. There's an extra team you didn't mention there, and that's Southampton. Because if Don't Southampton win, six points behind us. Yes, They're six points behind. Uh, uh, us. Two well, games well, in hand, well, but they've yeah. got to play Leicester. They've got to play Leicester, and they have to play us. So they can yeah, beat the us game. at Ellen Road and pip us for the automatic yeah, point. Now that's the, the that's the, the terrible situation we put. But they up. won't. Don't worry about it. They and the thing right? is, and the thing is, for them to get to that point, yes, they would have to beat Leicester. Yeah. But we've now put ourselves in a position where even if they beat Leicester, Leicester still have a game in hand and can still finish above us. If we'd at least have drawn today, I think I would have been sat here confident and I would have said, you know what, we're in it to win it. Yeah. At least if we'd have got a point. But the fact we lost, and the fact that we lost, and this is huge for me. We've gone all the season, all the way throughout the at season, home, yeah, yeah. two games away from being undefeated at home the entire season. And I said from day one, listen, the one thing that's riding on, if we go undefeated at home the entire season, there's no way we don't go automatic. And today we blew it. And that is the biggest detriment, I think, is the fact that we lost that undefeated yeah. home record. Okay. And that, that, that even though technically that shouldn't really mean anything, it's points that mean everything, to me... Those kind of things mean a lot in the grand scheme of things, and especially confidence going into the last few games of the season. Maybe I'm being completely negative. I hope, you know, people in the chat or you guys can have a more positive spin on things. I'm not trying to be toxic or anything. I'm just giving how I feel no, I get off that. of watching that. I, I think, no, and everybody's entitled to their opinion, JT. Do you know what I mean? It's And it's fine. That's the whole point of us all sitting here and having different opinions. I, I would agree with you that today was was a disaster. I don't think I don't think yet it's going to be season defining disaster. 
Um, we still, I think if Ipswich had have won today, I would be feeling, I'd probably be close to where you are now saying, well, mm, I think now we need to start maybe potentially focusing on the playoffs. I don't think that happens yet. I, th- I still think because similar to what, you know, what Joe said, the teams that, that both Leicester and Ipswich have left to play, they're not easy places to go and get a result at. And they're not easy, you know, they're not easy teams to play either. I I agree with you with regards to to Pereira. I sent Joe a message at the start of the game going, he's gone for it. Mm-hmm. I if if anybody got being changed up front, I would have expected him to do Joseph and he didn't. And you can see that formation doesn't work for Peru at all. Peru is a 4-4-2 formation for me, I think, pretty much. And I just think, I know it's, you know, you can call, people can call me a happy clapper, Mr. Positive and everything and all of that kind of stuff. That's fine. I don't care. I will believe in my team until it's impossible to believe in my team. I just think there's still more twists and turns to this yet. But, you know, I, I get your points that you're making, JT, and it's, it's understandable because yeah. we shouldn't be losing to Blackburn at home. And, and I also, we are, t- sorry, Max, just before you come in and look, we are 21st in the form table in the last five games after this round, 21st, which tells you all you need to know. Leicester are um, 17th, Ipswich are 5th and Southampton 4th. So we are having, you know, a wobble, but we've still got three games. Go on, Max. I was just going to say, I think at this point, probably around the 40 game mark that's where form goes out the window who you're playing just doesn't really matter anymore because there isn't that much of a disparity on the on any given day between the top and the bottom of this league apart from Rotherham in anyone can beat anyone and when you actually look at so the top down to 10th all have something to play for but potentially it's a long shot for Preston for them to get into the playoffs but anyone from first to tenth have something to play for. Then, when you get down to the relegation zone, um, probably all the way up to QPR, so for twenty fourth to nineteenth and stuff like that. There's only like probably five to seven teams in the whole division of twenty four who don't really have anything to play for. So the chances of having to play one of them in the last few games is pretty low. And and so it doesn't matter that we were playing Blackburn, is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter that Ipswich, that Ipswich are playing Middlesbrough. It doesn't matter that Leicester were playing um, whoever they were playing, Plymouth. It's The results are just going to be, I know it sounds stupid, they're just going to be whatever happens on the day because it's not going to go off form. Earlier in the season, you go, okay, yeah, Leicester are definitely going to beat Plymouth. Leeds are definitely going to beat Blackburn. But at this point, it's just anything goes because everybody's got something to play for. Everybody knows exactly what they need by the end of the season to survive or to go up. So it's just going to be chaos, I think. And I think you're just going to get all the results are going to be, okay, well, you wouldn't have expected them to beat them or you wouldn't have expected yeah. them to lose or that to draw. Bro, or... Coventry got beat 3-0 by Birmingham City today. Yeah. <laughs> Birmingham City were in the relegation zone before today. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's mad. So uh, that's what I mean. Anything happen at this point. Championship is a very anything can happen league. But at this point in the season, who knows? <laughs> Honestly, anything can can happen when you're playing against teams who are, yeah, they might be crap, but they might sit in and they might defend like their lives depend on it, throw their bodies on the line and then nick a late goal. And it's just, you just have to, you have to come up with an answer. And the answer to that is just put the ball in the back of the net. Just be clinical. <laughs> create the chances but, but you know what the, the thing point is, in creating them you know we've had an answer the entire season and and i i i kind of spoke about it earlier on when even when we were doing well and when we play against these teams that do defend well and and stuff like that the only actual answer we have is individual quality and that individual quality throughout about 60 70 percent of the season has come down to two men together and that is Rutter and that is Somerville and you look at these games now where these teams are sat back defending for their lives and we have the ball in and around their goal area so many times but we don't have the individual quality to break it down yes I know a lot of injuries from the international break have harmed us but there's one specifically with the surgery and that is Rutter because I don't think it's a coincidence that the second that Rutter looks like he's off the ball a little bit and that he's uh, struggling with injury problems Leeds suddenly have no way of breaking these teams down and getting us out because if you 
look at a lot of the games that we've edged one or two nil, it has been from a moment of magic from Rutter or Somerville. But a lot of the time, it's Rutter actually creating something. And now that he's injured, we don't have anyone that can pick up the slack for him. And that's where I think our main problem is coming. If Rutter was firing on all cylinders, I think we would have won a couple of these games. And if we'd had won a couple of these games that we dropped points, we'd be in with, cruising right now. With Rutter, I, I agree. I think Rutter Rutter's not been the same since he's had his since he's had his hernia operation. Um, and it's interesting because I believe Nonto. Max might know this better than me. Nonto generally plays in the number 10 role for the Italian under 21s, doesn't he? I think. Yeah, yes. he does. Yeah. I definitely know that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so for me, <laughs> so for me, I, I'd have Nonto in that role. I think he's skillful enough. He's good enough. I think he's good enough. Not as good as what Rutter is when Rutter's completely on his game, but he's good enough to do it. Even if it's just that you, when you like, so people might say, okay, well, you can't not start Rutter because of this or that or whatever. And people might be upset if he doesn't start. But, but if you are going to take him off, which he has been taken off towards the end of the last couple of games, then you throw Nonto in there. Or if Nonto's on the bench, that's the sub you make. You take not you put Nonto in that number ten role, but he did, he doesn't seem to want to try him there. He wants to see seem to put Joel Peru in there, who's just he's not a striker. He's not a number ten. He's not. He doesn't no. really fit in. He's a jigsaw no. piece with it's just perfectly round and circular. He's, he's a pianist that's learning to play the guitar, basically. <laughs> I said a long time ago. He's not natural at it. He's learnt to a competent level and he's a competent, good championship player, but he's not natural in that system or in those positions, which is why I feel like when I speak or when I say these things, it feels like I'm digging out Perot in person. I'm not. I, I like the guy from everything I've seen. He looks like a really nice, good guy. And if you look at him at Swansea, he's a very good player. But in this system and in the way that it works, it just doesn't fit. As I said, he's just he's, it's like square pegs in round holes. It's just not working. And you say you put Nonto in there. The irony is he sub Rutter off and then sub Nonto off about what yeah. five, ten I minutes think just, later. Just to, just to back Farker up here in that respect, he did say Nonto, it's a fitness issue. Let's not forget Roberts and Nonto weren't due to start until Middlesbrough. Yeah. And he did say, I would have, he said, I nearly did keep him on. But what, what could it be the damage if he did? And then he can't, and then he gets a knot and then he can't play for the last three. Ultimately, for me, Nonto was by far and away our best player today. Yeah. By far yeah. and away. But well, this so is what need, I mean about not. You need to have him not fit being for bothered about the next. Three. Yeah, but then also we needed to win this game. But do you get what I mean? Like at, yeah, at this point, you. you've yeah. got to win this game as well. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, if we get three points on the board now, we can worry about that next game. We've got other players. Do you, yeah. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, would you rather have? Would you rather lose this game and have Nonto? Where it's just an unknown whether he would be able to impact the next couple of games. I don't know. It, it's this is it though. I genuinely well, that's think the call it's that this. he makes, isn't it? That's why Farker is the manager. I think it's this. Gruev wasn't in the position that he would have been in, and therefore it was too easy for Gallagher to win the header against Rodon. Then he went to Dolan, and that's what opened us up. That's well, what, yeah, yeah, why did he take it? What was the what was the actual logic? Because he was trying to win the game, bro. He was trying to win the game and didn't. Yeah, but that's not gonna help you win the game. I know, Stick to your original not. system and put yeah. fresh players on. And this is what I'm saying about why does he wait until the 60th, 70th minute and yeah. then try and make these triple changes? Just slowly yeah, I hear it. fresh I hear legs it. in. Yeah. No, I, I get it. I get it. Um right, Paul, what do we do moving forward, mate? We've got we've got um we got QPR Friday, or is it no Middlesbrough Monday, isn't it? Middlesbrough Monday. Yep. Um, quite a long layoff now. Time to get them ready. Three games to go. We're still in it. Obviously, Leicester have lost Ipswich Drew, which is massive. Is it just a case of like I don't it for me? It's not even about tactics at this point, Paul. It's not even about personnel. I feel it's about mentality for me. I think it, that's how I see it anyway. We just need a goal to go in, man, off someone's ass. Uh, <laughs> watch it be Bamford's ass as well. Um, I, I I think uh, I have the suspicion that the game that we play against Borough, that I think he will start Bamford. I don't think he'll start Peru again. I think that the, the Peru wasn't up to what he needed to be. He, I think this is where Farker needs to be brave. And I think... I think Rutter comes out non to, me, Rutter comes out, Nonto comes in with the opportunity to bring Rutter on later in the game. 
Fair. I think Rutter is struggling at the moment because there's a lot of weight on his shoulders. Um, I think having Dan James on Somerville and Nonto may, would make a huge difference with Nonto having a bit more experience of the 10 role. That that be for me. Somerville and Nonto also were interchangeable, really. I think if if they played, they wouldn't necessarily... You know how earlier in the season, when we first started, it was Piru in the number 10 and Jorginho up front, and they were yeah. supposed to interchange and swap. Mm. I think if you had Somerville and Nonto in the 10 and out wide, they could easily swap for a little bit, then swap back, and it would cause chaos in defences because they know Somerville likes to come in on his left, on his right foot. They know that, uh, but then also Nonto, if he's in there, he likes to do things a little bit differently and take on a player and then poke a ball through with the outside of his foot. Or do you know what I mean? If they if they can play, and we know that they've got like a synergy, uh, uh, an ability to play together and link things up. If you have Nonto in the number ten and Somerville out wide, they can easily swap back and forth and cause chaos and defences and I think maybe I mean, it's not really the time to be experimenting is it but I don't think that's well, that much could, of a experiment why, why not why not why not but actually I, I 100% agree with you but one fundamental difference which is why if people are actually talking about Nonto in the 10 seriously for me if you're going to put him in the 10 you have to put Jorginho Rutter on the other wing because I agree that Nonto is very good at switching positions and he does it a lot with Somerville, but I think it would work a lot more effectively if he had Rutter on the wing, who when he's played cameos on the wing earlier on in the season, I thought was actually really good because he has more time and space to drive at players. And I don't think Nonto could play the number 10 role isolated in that team for the entire 90 minutes. But at least if he has Rutter there, who's experienced in playing that 10 role, they could interchange and it will work a lot more. And in that case, it is still a gamble, but I think it's less of a gamble than what you said with Somerville and uh, Nonto taking that number 10 burden on. And for me, I don't I don't think you can drop Rutter. I don't care how unfit he is or anything. He is uh, him and Somerville, but especially him in terms of creative, is the only thing that's going to get us out of this situation. You, I don't care if he has one leg. I would still play him. He's that good and that imperative to everything. And without we've him, got, in the we've tight, got a, bang a good out. few days now, haven't we, to for him yeah. to recover? What yeah. was it eight, eight, nine days between the before the next? Yeah, game, we don't so. play till Monday, bro. Yeah, so, so eight, nine days, bro. So nine days. Yeah, See, depending yeah. on how the weekend goes as well, it could be uber pressure on Monday night. Oh, massive! Yeah. Well, Ipswich have now got a week. They don't even play next. They don't even play next weekend. Yeah, true. They don't play because um, yeah, they've got. That's why they play two games before we play our last. So mm. Southampton play Preston on Tuesday. Leicester West Brom's uh, lunchtime kick off Saturday, and then we play uh, Monday. And then Ipswich don't actually play till the twenty seventh. They've got like two weeks off. Yeah, they don't play till the twenty seventh. Why? It's due, I think Coventry is some, yeah, fake up something uh, like that. Um, but then they play twice. You see, before we go again. Do you know what I mean? So it's all a bit mad. So yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's when we've got one. What well, isn't it? When we've got one game left, they've got three left. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think oh, so. We, that that just means if we don't win every single game until that point, and we give them. That much confidence going into those games, we are absolutely finished. We haven't even thought about Southampton either. Well, that's what I was saying. They could catch us. If they win every single game, they will finish above us. Yeah, even I'm if they worried. win the next two, even if they win their two games in hands, they're on the same points as us, but we've got a better goal difference. But then so they have us to play. Yeah, but we just need to at least pick up some points before then. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's oh, the thing. God. We have to win every single game, but in that scenario... It could still come down to the last game of the season as to who finishes above our, our, out of us two. And then all they need to do is beat us on the last day of the season and they literally finish above us. So, which is why I'm saying I was counting them out completely, but I would actually put a long. decent... I, if, if, if you're a betting man, I would put a decent wedge of money on them sneaking into the automatics right now, unfortunately. Not happening. Not happening. I agree. I don't. I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll make it all the way to the automatics. No, I hope not. I hope they lose every game aside from Leicester. But <laughs> yeah, they've got to play Preston. They've got to play Leicester. They've got a game on the weekend. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I don't know. And then I was like, don't worry about them. The shit. <laughs> you told me we were going to win the last three games, Joe. Man, what do you mean? You told me don't worry, we're going to we're going to be cruising. I thought I was going to be sipping pina coladas on the beach from listening to you, man. Honestly, you me... I genuinely felt before we went into this game we were going to dick them. I can't lie to you, I did, and obviously it's crumbled. And 
Um, yeah, no, I'm nervous no, now. Yes, and I'm we nervous. all we all we all felt that. But yeah. fucking... let's before we finish up, let's let's check the temperature. I think that we're going to get three yeses and one no. But um, I'll start us off. Leeds United can and will still get top two for me. Um, it's if it switch to one today, I'd have said no. Because I feel like the game in hand for Leicester sees them over the line and then Ipswich. But the fact that they've dropped points, we're still within one. I think we can get wins. Um, we have to. So my, I'm still in. I'm still in for it. Max, thoughts? Yeah, I, th- I feel like the only thing that we can do is just try and be positive. Now it makes no makes no difference whether we think that we're going to go into the playoffs or whether we think that we're going to go into. The automatic so why not be positive we're gonna mm. this this is the turning point for our form we've got a, a break a good amount of time off and this is when we're gonna go and we're gonna smash middlesbrough and we're gonna smash qpr i'm gonna oh, smash yeah. the league yeah it's like the roles are reversed from the midweek fix days the <laughs> and you're the one cutting promos well i'm gonna go to you now jt before we finish on a positive i hope anyway uh go go over to you jt what are your thoughts are we still oh, getting top you two you don't think i'm gonna finish on a positive well oh, no because okay. you've already told us your answer earlier yeah we're getting relegated uh, it's <laughs> gonna be league one next season i can't lie to you mate uh it's rough uh listen i know i did say that i struggle to leave listen i always like to you know as i said you don't have to go to bed in an argument i don't like to leave things like that so you know what <laughs> If I can uh, add some Kavorka to the air, shout out LA Knight. If I can throw some positive Kavorka out there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what everybody saying? Leeds United getting promoted. The Kavorka yeah. is in the air. I know things seem doom and gloom, but you know what? It's Leeds United. These other schmuck clubs, Ipswich, psh, Leicester, psh, Southampton. <laughs> No chance. Leeds will just about edge promotion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll put it out there. I'll put it out there. Right? We will just about edge it. But it, we have to win every single game. If we drop one more point, no. But if we manage to win every single game, then I think we might just edge it in there. We need wins and we need them quick. Paul, what about you? Yes, on goal difference. Love that. Oh, God. Love that. <laughs> <Straight> <laughs> <imagine. Imagine>. Mate, <laughs> on goal, that is... It's risky as well. And Bournemouth have just gone one 0 up against Scum, so that's yeah, that's I know. Nice. And Dominic Solanke was in my fantasy team, so I'm, I'm I'm buzzing. I don't even like um, Bournemouth though, so you know. I don't mind. Yeah, that's um, true. There we go. Goal difference. Listen, if folks, we had Sinistera and they didn't take him from us, then I think we would have been uh, won the league by now. Is he but... fit? He's not even no, fit. It's, it's, Sinistera can't walk two paces without injury. No, yeah. yeah. And yeah, Adams has got injured know. again, Annie. So Adams yeah. is out. So we've we've stolen. We've we've yeah we've done well. Stolen. Um, yeah. Um, right, folks, we'll leave it there. Listen, it's been a long day for me. Make sure you check out JT, JT Live. Make sure you check out Paul at Leeds Therapy. Uh, get him to 1K subs. Make sure you check out Max at Leeds Lady uh, for all your post-match reactions and stuff. It's been a long old day. I'm going to eat some food and sleep. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Peace out, folks. Enjoy the rest of your day if you can. Look, we're still in the hunt. That's what you have to remember. Results have gone our way. Borough next or QPR? Still in Borough. the hunt. Mike, Borough. baby. Come on, let's do this. Bye-bye, folks.